This is volume 123 of the Mars Hill Audio Journal. I'm Ken Myers. The word epistemology comes from a Greek compound word meaning the study of knowledge. The word is typically used to describe a branch of philosophy that explores questions about how we know, how we acquire, sustain, and manipulate knowledge, what constitutes a fact, what's the difference between knowing that and knowing how, the difference between knowledge and belief, the question of how faith and reason interact. These are just a few of the kinds of questions that show up in the study of epistemology. But it's not just professional philosophers who are concerned about such questions. Esther Lightcap Meek recalls, quote, I remember asking the question of myself with great anxiety as a middle schooler, how can I be sure that there is a material world outside my mind, close quote. Meek grew up, perhaps unsurprisingly, to become a philosopher. But the question she raised, an epistemic question, that is a question about knowledge, has probably haunted lots of people, though maybe not many in middle school. Esther Lightcap Meek confesses that, quote, I am one of those odd people who think that epistemology is almost the most important and practical thing everybody needs to consider, close quote. But if you read her books about knowing, you realize she doesn't really think it's that odd to concern oneself with the nature of knowing. The only odd thing may be knowing the word epistemology, knowing a lot about the history of debates for thousands of years about what knowledge is and how it works, and being profoundly aware of how confusion about the nature of knowledge creates problems far outside the realm of technical philosophical study. Like many others who recognize the distorted assumptions that characterize modern culture, Meek is very concerned to help us reform our thinking about knowledge, to challenge what she calls the defective default setting concerning matters epistemic. Near the beginning of that second book, she sketched an outline of that faulty set of assumptions. Quote, when we think of knowledge, we tend to picture it as information, facts, statements, and proofs. Knowledge consists exclusively of statements, pieces of information, facts. The best and only specimens of knowledge are those adequately justified by other statements that offer rational support, reasons for the claim in question. Knowledge is statements and proofs. Knowledge is facts. I sometimes use the word factoids for its slight connotation of disconnected bits whose meaning isn't particularly connected to the grand scheme of things. This is how we tend to picture what knowledge is. People just assume that knowledge is information. Close quote. And along with this understanding of what knowledge is, modern men and women have absorbed an assumption that certainty is the proper goal for knowledge. Meek argues that in that quest for certainty, we've restricted the character of knowledge, quote, to the articulable and exhaustively justified. Knowledge must be restricted to propositions, statements, and proofs. We have excluded other forms of awareness. She suggests that our insistence on certainty might be motivated by a fear of assuming personal responsibility, quote, if we must be perfectly certain of something to accept it, then we ourselves need take no risks, nor need we be held personally responsible for our lack of commitment. Certainty conveniently opens the back door to escape to irresponsibility, close quote. If you focus on these things, you run the risk of not knowing the thing you should be focusing on. And all forms of knowing, claim Polanyi, follow this pattern of active engagement by the knower. All-knowing involves a skill. The concept of subsidiary focal integration is central in Esther Lightcap Meek's new book, A Little Manual for Knowing, which is, as I've mentioned, a small and friendly book that summarizes a lot of heavy lifting by thinkers whose work Meek has appropriated, sifted, and developed. One of those thinkers is Marjorie Greene, a philosopher who worked very closely with Michael Polanyi in the development of his epistemology. Marjorie Greene, when she talked about Descartes um, in her book, The Knower and the Known, she argued that he just assumed the mind-body divorce uh, because it's the only way that you could get certainty. And generally, one of the maxims I often use with regard to the default is the defective default is to say certainty or bust. Mm. 
So somehow in the water of our our approach to knowing whether we've done philosophy or not, we just assume that knowledge is certainty. And if you don't have certainty, you don't have knowledge. Mm. So that's one of the, the dichotomies, certainty or bust, you know, certainty or no knowledge at mm. all. So, and for green, you know, it's associated with the mind-body divorce. They, they kind of connect with each other. Hmm. I don't know how you experience other people's approaches, but we, we really do have this um, dangling carrot, as I called it in Longing to Know, of certainty. Mm-hmm. And when we get in crises, uh, epistemic crises, that's when it comes out. You know, I, yes, and at that point, it seems to me that subjectivity and objectivity are a dichotomy fraught with all the baggage of modernity, and it just helps to break out of that and go into a third way of thinking about things. And then, uh, you know, objectivity actually becomes way more three-dimensional. Uh, subjectivity becomes like bike riding, mm. you know. And, you know, the other side of this, as, as you would know from um, my earlier books, here, here's the intoxicating part of this for me, is when you finally get it about keeping your balance on a bike, the world opens up to you in bikish ways. So you start to think about the possibilities of places that you could go, all right? And so that's actually what I wrote my dissertation on in Bolani, because you remember my little eighth grade question was about the material world out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what Polanyi said that what to me was just this magical phrase and, and the water of life to my parched Cartesian soul, he would say, we know we've made contact with reality when we have a sense of the possibilities of indeterminate future manifestations. Mm. So possibilities that we cannot articulate, we just sense them. And that's actually what guides the scientist, he says, toward the discovery. You have this sense of possibilities. And it's also what confirms to the discoverer that he's onto something. Mm-hmm. Because you just have this sense of there being all, all kinds of sides of this that you cannot name. Back to objectivity. Yeah. Future possibilities is way bigger than objectivity to me. Because like as Marjorie Green said, it's not about confirmation, it's about hope of confirmation. And so reality can become three-dimensional. Realize so, that this informational commodified approach to knowing is about power. Mm-hmm. And I think it's one of the, the, um, the uh, positive benefits of the critique of modernity that we've had for a couple of centuries now, but most recently, you know, in the 1980s, to point that out, that, you know, the other side of knowledge is power, is power is knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I think young people are really sensitized to power in this milieu, you know, uh, to victimization, to control, to um, agendas, you know, all those kinds of things that when I was a youthful age. I don't think that that we were. But I do think you, you've you said it exactly right. Mm. We've got to choose whether to be a human is to be about control and power, or is it about to, is it about love? Yeah, and, and love. And, I know and, that and, sounds wishy-washy, yeah, no, but, but love and, but and I'm, yeah, and receptivity is another word that shows up in your book that and reciprocity. Yeah, you know, so, you know, I want to see the knower and the yet to be known, mm-hmm. you know, me, me in the world, you know, any knower and the, the surroundings as, as um, able to be partners in a kind of dance mm. of mutuality. So overture and response and overture and response and the dance itself becomes healing. To me that the so quest I, for certainty is very, very much tied also with our our individualistic approach to knowledge. That is the Mm. assumption that we have to know by ourselves and can't know in community and don't therefore know from within a network of trust that's sustained in that community. 